So this is an overview of the uh, review for the test. So we're going to talk about each question. I'll probably go a little bit fast, but uh, you can always rewind me if you need to. So looking at this little guy right here, we want to read this cylinder. Remember, you read the bottom of the curve. Uh, this is 2 milliliters. This is 3 milliliters. So this line must be 2.5 milliliters because it's halfway between 2 and 3. If that's 2.5, then that one has to be 2.6, and that one has to be 2.7. However, the bottom of the curve is not up to the 2.7, so you've got to estimate one digit about 2.65. So the correct answer is 2.65. On the next one, looks like it's right on the line, and the line is 24, because that's 20, and that's 30. So this is 25, so that has to be 24. But yet, the answer will not be 24 because you always have to estimate one digit. And here you're estimating that it is right on the 24, so you would say 24.0, like that. Okay, you measure a pin found to be 13.56. Remember the last digit we just estimated was this number right here, the zero, the last one? So here the last one is a six, so the answer is the six is estimated. Uh, the width of the table is 0.97. And if you convert the width to centimeters, what unit will go on the bottom of your conversion factor? Let me show you that on a piece of paper. So you have 0.97 meters, like this, and you want to convert it. So you're going to say meters on the bottom. You're going to say uh, kilometers on top. So you, what you're looking for goes on the top. So we're going back to this. It says you want to convert to, oops. You want to convert to centimeters. I just made a mistake. So come over here again. And instead of being kilometers here, that'll be centimeters. Still, what you're looking for goes on top. So centimeters over meters. Meters goes on the bottom. The answer was meters. Right, let's shrink this up again. All right, and then uh, moving on to number five. The length of the table is 2.13. So if you have 2.13, you put what you're looking for on top. This is what I was thinking of earlier. Let me span this guy out here again. So if we had here uh, 2.13 meters, and we want to go to kilometers, you know whatever's here goes down here. Kilometers on top, one of those, a thousand of those. But the key thing is the kilometers are on top and meters are on the bottom. So you want to put what you need to get rid of down at the bottom. All right, so now number six, you got 2.13 meters. You're going to change it to kilometers. So what will you need to multiply or divide by 1,000? We well, set it up like this. So 2.13 on top. That's over an imaginary one. One times 1,000 is 1,000. So now do you multiply or do you divide by this 1,000? Since it's on the bottom, you're going to divide by it. So the answer is 0.00213. Or the, actually, the answer here was just divide. Moving on down, which is larger? Grams, centigrams, kilograms, milligrams. Remember our little things sheet. Looks like this. So it says that, uh, let's stop the share so we can see a little better here. A kilo thing is a thousand things, but one thing is 10 deci things. So if this was kilograms, it's 1,000 grams. One gram is 10 decigrams. One gram is 100 centigrams. One gram is 1,000 is milligrams. So what's the biggest? It's a kilogram. So a kilogram would be your biggest thing. OK, so the answer is kilogram. Boom. Uh, which contains three significant figures. All right, remember, zeros in front are never significant. Zeros at the end are significant if there's a decimal point. The zeros in the middle are always significant. So here we're dealing with front, end, end, end. So the ones that are significant at the end are the ones with a decimal point. The ones in the front, or zeros in front are never significant. So the correct, correct answer has to be that one because it has a decimal point. The estimated digit is always the last digit. That's one they guessed on, so it's the zero. How many significant figures here? Zeros in the middle, always. Zeros at the end, significant if there's a decimal. There is a decimal. So that means that there are one, two, three, four, five significant figures there. And this one, zeros in front, never. Zeros at the end, if there's a decimal, there is a decimal. That's a zero in front. 
So the answer is two, two significant figures. In 200, zeros in the, there's no zero in front. There's no zero in the middle. There's only zeros at the end. There's no decimal. So therefore, there's only one significant digit because zeros at the end are only significant if there's a decimal. All right, if you multiply these, how many significant figures can be in your answer? Well, one, two, three digits here. One, two, three, four digits there. So you can only have, you can't have any more significant figures than whichever one of these two numbers had the least. The rules for multiplication and division are when you multiply, you have to round off so that the answer has, this, has the same number of sig figs as the factor with the least. So three, four, the answer can only have three. Down here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six multiplied by a number with only one sig fig. The factor with the least has one sig fig, so the answer can only have one sig fig. Now, when you add and subtract, the rules are different. You have to go to the least precise place. Now, least precise means the one that is least far to the right of the number. So this is the hundredths place. Remember, a hundredth of a centimeter is about this big. See my hand over here. A thousandth is about that big. So the less precision is this bigger space. So you have to round it off to the place that the three is in, and that's the hundredths place. Here, you're going to subtract again. Let's see, you're subtracting here. So you got tenths, you got ten thousandths. So a tenth of a meter is about this far. A ten thousandths, teeny, teeny, teeny. I can't even make it with my fingers. So the less precise is the tenths place. So you'd have to round to the tenths place. All right, when I do this, let's go ahead and write this out. Well, actually, the numbers are already, the calculator is going to give you one of these numbers. But we know that our answer can only have three significant figures because there's three here, there's five here, so three is the factor with the least. So you've got to pick the answer here that has three significant digits. That'd be that one. Same kind of logic here. You've got how many significant figures here? Three here, five. The answer can only have three, so the answer has to be this one. When you're subtracting, you've got 12.577. Now, it seems like somebody did this today and said there wasn't a correct answer, so I'm going to actually work this one out. So 12.577. I'm going to subtract 2.4. So I get 10.177, if you can see that there. 10.177 would round off to 10.2 because this one is in the um, tenths place. This The seven's in the thousandths place. So tenths are less precise, so you have to round off to the tenths place. So that will be your answer. All right, using the shape sheet. Now we're on the shape sheet. Shape sheet's right here. Oxygen is a diatomic element. Which box could be oxygen? Let's make this bigger. All right. So the diatomic element has to have uh, two atoms that are the same because it's an element. So the box F would be the oxygen. HCl is a diatomic compound containing hydrogen and chlorine. It's a diatomic. What's di mean? That word right there means two. And it contains hydrogen and chlorine. So if it has hydrogen and chlorine in it, the atoms are different, but they're still just two atoms, so it has to be this box. Couldn't be that one because they're the same. So this is H and Cl, or two different elements in the same compound. All right, which one contains a mixture? So you look over here and look for a mixture. Um, I, G-H-I. I is a mixture because that's not the same as that. F is not a mixture. They're all the same. E, e is not a mixture because they're all the same element, all the same um, compound. They're all, they all, all the particles look the same. There's five of them, and they're all diatomic compounds. This, these guys are all the same. So a mixture has to have different things in it, so the answer is I which contains a compound. So A is not a compound because all the, it's just individual atoms. Neither is C for the same reason. H, F, F is here, G, H, H. H is a compound because you've got different kinds of atoms bonded together with chemical bonds. Every molecule is just like every other molecule, so there are five molecules in this sample of the compound. Which box is made of two atom molecules? 
two atom molecules would be box F. You kind of, I already I kind of repeated that question for you. Sorry about that. But that's box F. Two atom molecules could be also box E. But so you could have both F and box E on this one. A com oh wait, no, you can't. A compound, a compound made of two atom molecules has to be box E. Box F is an element because the atoms are the same. So it has to be box E. 25, using a shape sheet, a mixture of compounds. That would be this one down here, and this is box I. So that compound is different than that compound. So there's two different kinds of compounds in there. A mixture of elements. That's an element because the atoms are the same. This is an element because there's only one atom. It's a standalone monatomic element. So this is two different kinds of elements. The answer is box G. A pure substance. Pure means only one identity. So that, that is pure. That, that, excuse me, that's not pure. That is pure. That's not pure. Pure, 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 not pure, pure. So the one that contains a pure substance out of this list is not G, not I. Box D is pure because everything's just uh, the same. All, this is the same as that, which is the same as that. That makes it pure. Uh, particles of multiple identities. That would be a mixture because in mixtures you have different things in the same box. So that would be box I because that's different than that. The others are all pure. D and C and A were all pure things. So box I was a mixture. It has multiple identities. A monatomic element could either be A or C. And looks like our choice here is C because A is not listed. Monatomic means one atom. How many SQs are in each molecule in box H? F, G, H. Box H is right here. Looks like there's two squares in each one, so the answer is two. You can tell that a couple ways. One way is look at the picture. The other way is there's a little two right here when you're actually looking up close at the shape sheet. It says um, R, S, Q, 2, T. So the, the two tells you there's two of them. Okay, now we had the particles in the box. The particles in the box look like this. And so when we raise the temperature, let's let some particles in. Let's move this out of the way so you can see a little better. When we raise the temperature by we'll put some particles in first. Here's some particles. That's going to make the particles begin to move faster. Can you see them getting faster and faster as I do that? All right, so what happened to their motion when the temperature was raised? They speed up. What happened to pressure when the temperature was raised? Well, let's go back and look. So I'm going to put a few more molecules in. We can see it better, maybe. OK, so there we go. Actually, let's put in light molecules. Things they move a little faster because they're lighter. OK, now, what's the pressure? I'm going to raise the temperature. Since they're moving faster, they're going to hit the side of their container uh, at a faster rate. They're going to be moving faster when they hit it, so they're going to exert more force, and that's why uh, the answer is the pressure increases. Okay, uh, when they move, which particles uh, move faster at the same temperature? Well, let's look back and see. So I put some heavy ones in. These guys will be at the same temperatures. Which ones look like they're moving faster, the blue ones or the orange ones? So the lighter ones move faster. So that would be the small ones. How does the temperature change when the particles are let out of the box? Uh, this is something I didn't do a great job of pointing out in class, I don't think, but watch this. I'm going to open up the box. Watch the temperature. Don't know if you ever noticed it, but uh, if you ever use a can of hairspray or a can of some other aerosol, as you let the liquid, uh, liquid out as gas, the can gets colder. 
That's because it takes energy to make the molecules uh, move into the gas phase. So the temperature decreased. Okay, the pressure of 250 light particles compared to the pressure of 250 heavy particles at the same temperature. Let's go back and look. I'll close this guy up. And reset. Set 250 of each one. So let's go to 250. These are the 250 heavy ones. We'll just do it at this particular temperature, whatever that is. While we're waiting for things to equilibrate, I want you to notice that at any given temperature, some molecules are moving slow and some of them are moving fast, and the temperatures actually measure the average amount of motion. So see our pressure is about 31, 32 atmospheres right in that range. Okay, let's take those out, go 250 light ones. 31, 32, remember that. I would expect the pressure to be about the same, and it's close in that 29.2 range. Fill that up with the heavy particles again. Just look at that one more time. It takes a minute for the heavy ones to spread out. Okay, so my temperature is 253K. This time the pressure is right around 25. I said the temperature was 253K. The pressure is going to be about the same. The point is that the light molecules, and you can play with this more on your own, but I don't want to put it all in this video, but the light molecules and the heavy molecules really should exert the same pressure. The heavy ones move slower, but they, since they're heavier, they hit the sides um, with more momentum or more force. The lighter ones move, they don't have as much, they're not, they don't weigh as much, but when they hit the wall, they're hitting it at a faster speed, and so it comes out with the same force. And so the pressure should actually be the same, as force per unit of area. All right, let's move on. So it should be about the same. The slowest moving particles, that'd be solids, I think we all know that. And the particles in gas, gas, the particles in the gas simulation, they could either be atoms or molecules, depending on if you're talking about an element or a compound. And if the particles in the gas simulation contain more than one kind of atom, they were molecules. All right. Now we're back into our mixtures lab, get close to the end of this. A pure substance has only one identity. Uh, and when the particles move faster without breaking apart, that would be a physical change like evaporation in our lab. And the gas burned, that was not physical, that was a chemical change because we changed our gas from the Bunsen burner into... Uh, carbon dioxide, from methane to carbon dioxide. The filtrate in the lab was the liquid that had gone through the filter paper, so it contained a solution. It was a salt water solution. Solutions are homogeneous mixtures. Now we used uh, water in our lab to facilitate the separation. The in a small formula in the H2O tells us that there are two H's in a water molecule. What is that two called? Remember, it's written down below the formula. It's called a subscript. The sky's blue. That was a physical property because you just look at it and say it's blue. Oxygen, nitrogen, some other elements always occur in pairs. When they occur in pairs, they are diatomic. Diatomic. We talked about that. You guys did a good job of remembering that. And in our lab, we had a mixture of sand, salt, poppy seeds, and iron. Which one of those contained only one kind of atom? Which one was an element? That'd be iron, so the answer was iron. All right, so that's a little review of that uh, particular quiz. Uh, be sure that you understand that thoroughly as we move into one similar to that on uh, next, in the next class period.